Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Lockdown Learning, brought to you by the Black Country Studies Centre. The centre is a partnership between the University of Wolverhampton and the Black Country Living Museum. My name is Dr Esther Asprey and I work at the University of Warwick in their Department of Applied Linguistics. I'm a dialectologist, which means that I study dialects, and the dialect that I study is Black Country dialect. I've been studying the dialect since I did my PhD, uh, which finished in 2007, uh, and I found out several things about the history of the dialect and how it's spoken today. It still is very much alive today, as I'm sure you will know if you have any interest in the Black Country, um, and we could say that it's the first language of many of the people who live in the Black Country area. Um, and it's spoken also outside the region, so dialect regions don't stop when physical regions stop. When I did my research, of course, like everybody who works in the area, working out where the Black Country stopped was one of the things that I had to try and do. And it's not really possible to say where the Black Country stops. And it would be very silly to suggest that we just walk over the road, um, you know, we cross the road in Birmingham out of the Black Country and, and we turn into a place where everybody speaks very differently. So the line, unfortunately, between Black Country and Birmingham dialect is it, blurred, as you would expect. Dialects don't have sudden sharp boundaries. So the Black Country dialect um, originated as it's spoken today during the Industrial Revolution. It has roots that tie it back to, so you'll often hear people say that it's the dialect that Shakespeare spoke. It had roots that go right back into Old English, so it does have links to Mercy and Old English. When people invaded what was then a, essentially a Welsh-speaking area, the, the, the Germanic language that they brought with them was a dialect of its own. So things like mon instead of man, ond instead of hand, they come directly from the version of Old English that was brought here. The other thing that is tied directly to that is, is er for the pronoun, the female pronoun. So where's er gone? is directly tied to the variety of Old English that was brought into this area of the West Midlands. So it's very true to say that in some respects it is the kind of English that Shakespeare would have been used to. It has a long, long pedigree as a dialect. But like all dialects, it's subject to change. So young speakers don't often, you know, they will use different dialect words to older dialect speakers. One of the words that's changed, for example, is suck for sweets. So if you go right back and ask much older speakers, they remember another word, which was suckers. So it did have a plural ending. You could have one sucker, two suckers. And now, of course, we just talk about a bag of suck. So a bag of sweets is a bag of suck. And you don't say sucks particularly. Some people might, but most people just say suck. So the, the dialect has changed across time. And my research has also looked at attitudes to the dialect. So people, unfortunately, will probably be aware that the Black Country dialect is very often, on a UK level, rated as friendly, but perhaps not, um, not appreciated. It's often rated very low on tests. You know, how, how intelligent do you think this person sounds? How competent do you think this person sounds? It rates low, like all urban dialects. This doesn't make any sense, so we know this. If we go to France and we speak no French, we won't be able to rate different dialects of French and say, well, I think this one sounds very posh, this one sounds, oh, not very good, I, I like that one. All we might be able to say is, I like the way this one sounds, because we've got no knowledge of the social situation in France. If we, similarly, if we ask someone from America who has no knowledge of English dialects to come to the black country, they often love the accent and find it just a nice English accent. They will say how, how very cute and English it sounds, because they have no knowledge of the social history of the black country. But it is, as we've seen in, in other episodes of lockdown learning, an industrial region. And this, this does mean that certain people across the UK might think that it's a, it has connotations of in industrialisation. You know, they think of a grimy, dirty place, um, working class professions, and they link this to all sorts of unpleasant stereotypes. So my work has been looking at how that perhaps plays out for students in the classroom. So if their teachers, you know, don't like black country dialects, how do they then negotiate that? What does that? What does it do to a person if your teacher keeps saying this is wrong, wrong, wrong? Because teachers' jobs, of course, is to teach standard English. Um, how can teachers do this? How can they make sure that children write standard English without making them feel very, very bad about the way they speak? Um, so this has been some of my work. And I've also traced the history of the dialect a little bit more, and I found that there's regional variation. You can read a little bit more about that in the post that I've put up, and I hope that it will interest you. So. 
like all dialects, it varies across regions. If you go from one town to the next, you will find that people know different words, people have slightly different pronunciations. So I think I, I told you about West Bromwich speakers maybe saying doer. Um, if you go to Dudley, to Netherton, to Briley Hill, you might get doer. And most people nowadays, having been through the school system, will know that the standard pronunciation is door, and they will use that as appropriate. Uh, and so this is really what I've been working on. Uh, and what else am I doing at the moment? I've been looking at literature in the black country. So what we started to see is a resurgence of pride in, in black country dialect. And we're starting to see places like Cannock, uh, people in Cannock saying, you know, I feel a bit black country. People in places like uh, Wolverhampton, which have been contested, you know, is this in the black country or not? They pretty much, you know, they will say, yes, this is the black country. There are signposts in Wolverhampton announcing you're in the black country. The label is changing. Um, one of the things that seems to have done this is Peaky Blinders. So with the arrival of that series in Birmingham, having been shot at the Black Country Museum and having been so closely associated with the region seems to have brought an associated sense of pride. And recently we've seen a little bit of a resurgence. National polls conducted about whether the accent is, is nice are finding that it's not rated right down the bottom of the heap anymore. So perhaps the stereotypes are shifting. And certainly literature is undergoing something of a resurgence. So we see people like Liz Berry, Anthony Cartwright, writing in dialect and representing, you know, for the first time really since everybody had to go to school to the age of 14, real attempts by, I suppose, literary authors to write down the dialect. So I, I hope this has been interesting. That's just a little bit of what I do. I've put some links for you at the bottom of the page and, um, you know, I've got my contact details there too if you've anything to ask me or you'd like to read any of the readings that I have read, you, you know, you're welcome to ask me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and do continue to stay safe and thank you for listening. Bye bye. <music>